It's not just mine, his or her house. This is our house. Hello everyone, I'm your host Tyrone Lowe. The show is called The Legends. I want to thank everybody that subscribes to my show all over the world and show me love. And listen man, without you guys, there wouldn't be no legends. In the house of the legends, I have somebody that I've known for quite a while, a very down to earth person, and um, he actually entertains. So he's a house music artist, and I give you in the house of the legends, Aaron Prince. What's going on Aaron? We here. We here. <laughs> What's going on? How man? are you? I'm oh, glad man. to Good be to here. See we you, got man. a shake on it. That's right. <laughs> Most likely. Yes. How's oh, it been, man? How's it going? I made it. I made it. God has been so good. He woke me up today. It's great. Um, in spite of everything we've um, been through in the past few years, since we've seen each other in person. Oh, but, yeah, definitely. You know, I'm here, you yeah. know, so I can't complain. You know, I, d I started to do a track with you years ago. We never completed that it. That is right. <laughs> yeah, you but know, you know what? what? Let me buy. Okay, see, no, 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 no. I got to get out of here. <laughs> no, but you know what? We'll, we'll get it done. Yes. We'll get it done. Um, let's talk about the beginning for you, Aaron, because you're a special type of dude that does a special type of house music type of vibe. So... Let's take it back to the beginning of you. How did you actually get into the music thing? Okay, uh, see what had happened was, um, by the most high, I became a dancer professionally when I was 20, mm -hmm. but I was dancing since I was like seven years old. Right. And I uh, was still poor to go to dance school, but I was blessed by God with natural rhythm. And I moved from Florence, South Carolina to Patterson, New Jersey, mm -hmm. and discovered house music action in 1986. However, now okay. I date myself. Um, okay. But 88, I went to my first house music club called Club um, Cheetah. Okay. In Patterson, All right. New Jersey. Just walking the street, not walking the street, walking down the street by accident mm -hmm. and heard this beat. And I was like, what is that noise? Mm -hmm. Music sounds fun. I said, wait a minute, I heard that music before. And at the time, I was familiar with Tim City, Inner City, a diva. Not knowing I was moving to the city that she actually was from, Patterson, right. New Jersey. Mm -hmm. And my first night there was on a Thursday night, and I lost my mind. You know, they said that one hit, that was music it. people that was did it. it for me, and that was it. And so I moved back to South Carolina for like 15 months, I think, and then mm -hmm. I came back to Patterson and moved to Newark and discovered um, Club Zanzibar. I knew that really blew your mind. <laughs> Tony Humphreys. Woo! I can imagine. I can imagine. Those who know, know, right? Mm -hmm. And and I was that short kid, five, six, standing in front of the mirror. Tunk, Tony Humphreys is right there, DJ. And I'm pushing the big dudes out of the way because I need that spot. Right. I need the mirror and the DJ uh -huh. and the music. I would hear nobody, see nobody. That was my thing. Right. And so fast forward to 95, I moved to Brooklyn mm -hmm. and started with you know, between 90 and 95, I started going to different clubs like um, Shelter, Tunnel, Lime Like the Big Boys and stuff right, like that. Right, right. And that was it for me. And it was something about the music. And I think what made me became so in, in love with the music because I heard that church sound, that soulful Jersey gospel church. The church kids go to church on Sunday and they right. dance on Saturday night. Mm -hmm. They brought that in into, and it was always about the music, about the lyric, mm -hmm. and about the feel of something that touched the soul. Like you were stressed out. Monday through Friday from your work environment. Right. And you needed one song, like, oh, that song is talking to me type of thing. Mm -hmm. And so that was the thing for me with that. And um, mm -hmm. my first song. Well, before you even answer that, yeah. what made you get into production? A funny story. Okay. Boston Market Restaurant on 23rd and 8th Street. Okay. I was in there. They had the, um, the sound system going on, some house music playing on the radio or whatnot. I think it's pumped in. And I was dancing, it was this DJ from, um, they had a studio across the street, literally, I mm -hmm. kid you not, um, upstairs on the fourth floor. And he was standing behind me, he said, oh, you're a dancer? I said, yeah, I'm a dancer, I'll go to the clubs and whatnot. And he says, I'm a producer. And I said, really? Mm -hmm. And so I said, you know, I always wanted to do a song, but I was uh, terrified of writing. I didn't know how to write at the time. But I was always a writer, you mm -hmm. know, 
bookworm. And I said, you know what? He said, if you write a song, we could produce it, my first track. And I was working in Jersey at the post office at the time. And it was this white guy who was into rock and roll music. He was a lyricist. Okay. And I told him I wanted to write a song. I met a producer in New York. I'm going to be a big star. And <laughs> I promise you, that's a real story. Okay. And um, you got to hear this one. And, and so I wrote an essay of the message of the song I wanted to be about. You mm -hmm. know, I'm openly gay. I don't mind sharing it. And it was about that, living right. in your truth. Mm -hmm. And he entitled the song Living in Fear. And he wrote it. And then as a joke in the studio, I pretend to be someone from um, England with a British accent. So oh, if, wow. you know, if you hear the song, it sounds like I'm from England, but I'm clearly not. <laughs> and, and, and the song, I thought it was going to be a joke, like a little funny right. thing. Six months later, after we shopped it, it ended up in Billboard magazine. Wow. That's amazing. It was written, written up on the Billboard magazine, and it was remixed by um, DJ Duke. It came out on his label. Okay. On Power Music Distribution. And um, I, my best friend thought I was joking when I said I did a song. She said, yeah, right. So she was in the tunnel one night, mm -hmm. and she said, well, just come to the club. I think I hear you. And I went, and Junior Vasquez. Vasquez, yeah was playing the song and I, okay. I they had me to stand under the the light so he can see from his booth or whatnot and one of the bouncers said Aaron Prince is here and he just did this and he played and he played and that was my first time hearing myself in the club and I lost my mind it was crazy how I did you how did you actually how did you actually feel hearing it on a real sound system it was so surreal okay because like I said you know it's one thing to hear in and you look back then, cassette player or whatnot, but hear it on a, on a sound system. Mm -hmm. And everyone who went to the tunnel, you knew it was like an amazing sound system. Of, of course. And of it course. was different. It's like an out of body experience because it's like when you write something, mm -hmm. I think Erica Badu said, you know, I'm very sensitive about my work with my writing. Right. I don't know how you're going to receive it. Mm -hmm. And you don't know how it's going to receive the message. And it was so, I actually cried a bit. I'm, I'm not going to find it. I cried. I was like, oh my mm -hmm. God, that sounds crazy. But, um, and it was a, a reality check for me to get mm -hmm. into the the business side or the music business. The art is nothing. Right, you know right. I mean? However, it was like learning the business. And I was like, oh, man, I got to learn this business real quick. You know, yeah. and that's, it's, it's very f surreal that you actually mentioned that because you helped me along the way as far as oh, getting me into ASCAP and turning me on to BMI and sending me the documentations. And Ty, this is what you need to do. And you still do that up to today, you know? And I thank you for that, man. Well, I appreciate that. You know what is, um, here's my philosophy. I've always been a bookworm, um, and I'm an introvert. People might be shocked about that, but I really am. To this day, I'm a nonfiction person. <laughs> I just finished watching a documentary last night. I'm about education. Right. And I think from that, that first song, taught me how to learn about the music business, right? right. I read a book by mm -hmm. Donald S. Passman. But all you need to know about the music business, learning about how to write songs, how to um, publish and whatnot. And so that's what I did. I had joined BMI um, that summer, I think, because mm -hmm. we signed, we produced that record that May. And that September, I was already with BMI. And then I um, took it a further step and did my publishing. So I own my publishing. I write everything, mm -hmm. everything. Right, right. You know what I mean? And, how, and my writing process is where I literally sit in my bedroom or I'm out in a park somewhere. And I have to be in a quiet space, mm -hmm. and I have to try to write in a way that you can see what I'm saying, not just hear what I'm saying, get mm -hmm. a picture in your head, because I'm a visual learner. Right. And, and I always try to write something that's based on a message. So how did you, feel, how did you get into your concepts as what you want to write and what you want to actually express? Life experiences. Okay. Like, I would be a bad actor. I mean, I couldn't go to Hollywood and be an actor unless I do some actions like... <laughs> <laughs> and <I'm> like <laughs> but I like to observe life. Right. And it's always, and I come from a place where I need to write um, a message song. How can I share, not I don't want to say teach you something, but mm -hmm. share it with you that something I'm observing. Right, right. You know, there's a theme behind it. There's a reason for it, mm -hmm. you know. And it's not like some little cookie cutter type of thing. I can't do cookie cutter tracks or a lot of party tracks. I can with my eyes closed, but I prefer to give you something, a message, because I came from that, that era when we went to the club to hear that song that, Oh, that, I needed that. Right, that right. experience. Right, right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It was the beat. It was the bass line. It was the keys. Mm -hmm. And it was the, the vocals, the voice. Right. The word, the syllable. 
that sound. So have anybody confronted you about the testimonial part of your song and saying I can actually identify with what you're going through? Oh, wow, wow. Brother, brother. There's a song I did called God Is My Best Friend. Mm -hmm. And uh, ooh, kind of get me there. Caught me off guard. Okay. I was sitting in a Starbucks um, in Harlem one day, and I played the original version of God Is My Best Friend for a singer, mm -hmm. phenomenal singer. And she started crying. I was like, whoa, wait, hold on. I didn't even want to be like that. Like, oh, man. She was like, no, you touched me. And I was like, what? She said, you touched me. And I, mm. said, I said, tell me what it means to you, what I'm saying to you. You know what right. I mean? It's like an mm -hmm. out-of-body experience. And she explained to me she was going through something. Mm -hmm. And it was like, God is your best friend. I was like, wow, you know, because I'm not a holy person, but I try to just I'm a spiritual spirit thing, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And so another DJ, um, female DJ actually out of DC, inboxed me via email, and she had heard about me on Potomatic at the time. Right. And she said she was playing the song and what it did for her. And then I had a guy out of, outside of Chicago. He was in some mall, some big mall out there somewhere. Mm -hmm. And he said that you have me dancing in a mall. And I was like, what? I mean, first of all, who wow. are you? He said it on Facebook. That's incredible, right? I though. promise you. That's and incredible. And I was like, wow. So I always try to write something that make you think mm -hmm. and not try to teach you, but to share with you and, and just try to be human because at the end of the day, we're humans. Right, of course. And if I can't talk to you from human to human, word to word, like we're doing right now, then right. I haven't done my job as a writer. Right. You know. And so, so, you know, um, you've done a lot of music, man, and um, I've always said that um, you always get that phone call from me. You know, I'm like, yeah, I'm, like, oh, man, I'm, I'm playing like, it, I'm playing what? it. <laughs> this is hot. You know, this um, guy. let's talk about some of the producers that you actually would have been, been involved with. Ooh, okay. Uh, the first one, um, shout out to Edward Venetea. He's from Peru. Mm -hmm. um, then my main producer, DJ Will Taylor. Um, he's like a brother to me. We, yeah, I met Will. Yeah, well, we, we was gonna do this. We was in the oh, studio together. The funny yeah. story, we met at another producer's um, studio, and he was the engineer for a project at me, and that guy was working on that. Turned to be a bad experience. Oh wow! <laughs> but it turned to be a blessing for us, and um, we've mm. been bonding together since mm. 2001. Oh okay. You know what I mean? And he and he's like, he's my 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 teacher in the sense that. When I'm in the booth, I always I go mm -hmm. in with the writing process of a rough draft mindset. Mm -hmm. This is how I think it should sound or feel right. or whatnot. And mm -hmm. then I always get the feedback because he's an engineer and he's trained. Right. And then I have um, Arnold D out of um, France. I have some brothers out of South Africa, DJ XT and stuff like that. So there's various mm -hmm. people that I work with. Right. I did a track with DJ Beloved years ago. Okay, Beloved. Um, mm -hmm. um, you're an Eagle. Mm -hmm. um, there's some other people I can't really name or top of my head right now. Mm -hmm. There's a guy out of England. I can't remember his name, but I did it years ago. Okay. So wh how I work is a lot of DJ slash producers are, are contact me and ask me if they, if they can do a remix or something like that, if I'm working on a new project, something like that. Right. So that's what I do with that. Mm -hmm. But I try to sit with my main producer, DJ Will Taylor. And Will is cool, too. I met yeah, him when we was yeah. in the studio, yeah. Well, you know what we're going to do right now? We're going to take a little break, and um, we'll be right back. <laughs> We got some fun people in the house tonight. This is our house. It's and we're back. This is Tyrone Lowe. The show is called The Legends. And in the house of the legends, I have house music artist, friend, <laughs> Aaron Prince in the house. Aaron, so, you know, let me ask you a question. As far as the music has from the past from you when you started to now, has, it, has there been a transition to you as far as the music itself? Okay, when you say transition in my style or just... Well, in, style, in, 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 in general, general, in general. In because well, the reason why I'm saying that is, as an artist, you want to actually build on your production. You don't want everything to sound the same oh, okay. and things like that. So, can you talk about that? Okay, for okay, without being shady, for me, <laughs> again, 
for me, I, I listen to various genres of music mm -hmm. outside of house, right, just right. for ideas and feels, mm -hmm. and, and thinking outside the box experience, if you will. Right. And I think because I was a military kid, my father was in the military, and so we traveled various places, so I got a chance to look at and feel different cultures, mm -hmm. types of people, even right. if they look like you. You may not think like you feel the way you, and, and try to reach them and study their culture like that, right? Mm -hmm. And so for me, if I'm writing something that I want some more like, let's say South Africa, right? I'm gonna study some South Africa artists. What are they feeling right now? Like mm -hmm. I'm in a Mafiano, right? And so I always try to think outside the box what I want them to feel. And mm -hmm. I'll, like for example, I'll sit and listen to track source and what is the lace so soulful or deep or whatnot and just get right. some ideas. Uh -huh. Because I'm such a student of of music, I listen to classics and things like that. I know what's what's real and what's not. And yeah. I can tell that being a musician, I could tell when you just put it together, it's like fast food versus right. like you took a meal and really took your time mm -hmm. and cooked the, the song and prepared the song right. and really serve it to the people. And I'm always about quality over quantity. Mm -hmm. Like I always put something out uh, prior to the pandemic. I try to keep it to like no more than six months, uh, no later, than, no earlier than six months, maybe like a year. Mm -hmm. Just to not flood the market. I see people do it. That's not me. Right. Because I want to to appreciate the product at the moment and right. get a feel for it. Not everything gets a video, but I always try to um, get something that you can. I'm always thinking like classic mm -hmm. meaning. Can you listen to that in five years? Can you listen to it in ten years? Can you? So you're projecting it? ahead. Yeah, I'm which thinking is cool, that. Which is really cool. Right? Which because is really that cool. gives the the music and the song and the message. Like, us for me, it's about the message, not necessarily about the beat. Right, right. I have my personal favorites. Even my own stuff has a personal favorite. I'm like, Aaron, did you do that? I'm like, <laughs> oh, really? And then so I'm like, God, wow. Mm -hmm. For example, I have a song that does very well on Spotify. Mm -hmm. Not my personal favorite. It's called Desert. People love it. And I'm like, mm -hmm. what is it about that song? But again, I'm not writing for myself. I'm writing for the artist, the customer, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's how I look at it. You have a new track that's coming out, and um, you want to tell the you want to tell the viewers about that? Oh, that's about listen. Um, it's one thing to hear, but we need to listen. I wrote that, the words maybe last year, I think, but I just went in the studio because I'm in law school right now. Right. And um, and congratulations oh, on your thank graduation. You. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And so um. Just, I have two nieces. I was on the phone with two of my nieces um, a few months ago, and one is 17 and the other one's 32, and I had to get the 32-year-old to intervene with the 17-year-old. She's going through some changes. Right. And I said it's important for me to not just hear you, but to listen to you and create a safe space. And sometimes when we're going through life, and I think since this past four years, if you will, mm -hmm. we've been going through change. We need someone to just listen to us, our complaints, right. our, our, our itching, our whatever, and just say, I just need you to listen to me. Not hear me, but listen. And I wrote that. I said, you know what? Let me listen to you. The importance of listening. And so that song um, will be out on May 31st, okay. uh, pre-release on Track Source, and worldwide June 14th. But I want that to be a song where people can sit down and say, you know what? Wow. I can walk away from having a conversation with that person, even if I'm the only one who's talking, and I learn something from it because I was listening. Mm -hmm. That's the purpose of that. Aaron, let's talk about some of your live performances um, that you've had in the past and the things that you're going to be able to do now. Let's see. I did mm, one in Brooklyn years ago before the pandemic because mm -hmm. I haven't performed since then. I had, unfortunately, had all my appendix taken out. Right. And then when the pandemic hit, it just kind of shut everything down, you know, and I went back to school and finished up my uh, my master's, my first master's, um, and it was I did all my education at NYU, and I <laughs> master's in human resource management and development, so mm -hmm. we did that. Practically did that online. That was a journey in and of itself anyway. And um, and then just enrolled in law school, and so I kind of had to shut down on just performances. I had to focus on that. Right, right. You know, get that. And I, I'm I'm such a bookworm. When I'm focused on school, it's, it's school, and, and I'm because I'm thinking about the what if factor. What if I can't perform? And I think since the pandemic, it was kind of like a blessing in disguise because mm -hmm. like many of us couldn't perform because we couldn't do live That's performances. True. I was thinking, well, what else can I do outside of music right. and prepare myself for? Because I'm foreseeing, think about what's going to happen down the road. Right, right. I can't dance like I used to. I can't do this. And, you know, what can I? What <laughs> tricks up my yeah. sleeve? Mm -hmm. You know, well, you know so. it's funny you mentioned the pandemic because I, I look at it as a fact of collecting yourself, 
uh, projecting yourself yeah and 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 actually you know turning things around that you're actually doing to the point where your mindsets is saying well listen I'm gonna do something a little bit different now, now and it gives you the time to actually you know accelerate that you know my question to you is and I asked my I asked my artist this <coughs> was kind of important you know there's people out here doing production that could be it could be acting producing singing things of that nature do you have any um, encouraging words for them as far as advice that you can actually give them? I did a song that came out two years ago and there's a video called Be Grateful. Mm -hmm. And I know it's like to be hungry because I grew up like that way, mm -hmm. you know, not now, but the pandemic was a, was a sermon in and of itself if you think about it mm -hmm. because it, it was a great equalizer, right? It, it just stopped us and say, what's really important, my next breath, and, and, and learn how to appreciate life, right? That's deep. Food, clothing, and shelter, mm -hmm. because somebody was hungry. Somebody was unemployed. Somebody's, th th what we're dealing with today, people are losing their minds. And for me, my safety is like I go to my church on Sunday, right? And, and I'm sitting there, and I'm just thinking, God, I'm here. Like, oh, no, I'm not only, but I'm here. Because I try to have a relationship with my most, my most high, my mm -hmm. God, right? Mm -hmm. And I'll go to sit in a park and level myself. It's not always about a party. It's about meditation sometimes. Yes. And I can be on a dance floor, and I'm meditating mm -hmm. because I'm trying to center myself because somebody can't dance anymore. True. So true. It, it just the ability to dance. Someone can't dance anymore. Mm -hmm. Someone can't eat anymore. Someone can't wash anymore. Someone can't breathe on their own anymore. And it's basic things that we, we take for granted. Mm -hmm. Those things are valuable to me. Right. And I get up every single day and I say, thank God that I was able to get out of bed on my own, mm. that I can get in the shower and wash my own. So that's right. important to me. And so I keep my music spiritual in that sense to make you stop and think. Just at the end of the day, I'm human. Be, just Be able to breathe, yes. That is so deep, you know, and, and that brings a lot of good collective thoughts as yeah, well. Because we got to be grateful. Because we, we're so busy asking for things. Right. Let me be grateful for what I have for exactly, now. Exactly, yeah. Well, you know, in life, you just can't have everything. You, you go crazy. <laughs> you go crazy. You know, you go crazy. I mean, uh, life is about just enjoying it. Uh, be, like you said, being grateful and be able to wake up the next day and swing another episode, you know. And that's, okay. and that's very important, you know. Um, what are you going to be doing, let's say, let's project a little bit, because we live day by day, but where would you like to be at least the next five years from now? Okay, next five, well, what I want to be when I grow up. Um, alive, alert and alive, mm -hmm. sane. Okay. Alert and alive and sane. Nothing else really matters. Mm -hmm. I've lost a few friends in the past few months. I watched a dear friend of 30 years be put in the ground. Mm -hmm. And when I went to visit her, she says, Erin, I, I thank you for being here, being a good friend. Okay. I just want to be alert and alive and sane. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, you know, there it is. Um, I want to thank you for being on my show, you know, letting it, giving it to everybody, getting to know who you are as a person, your spirituality, well-educated, and a great artist. So, um, and come back again. Thank you, most certainly. <laughs> most certainly. And this has been another Tilo video production. Before I actually close the show, I want to give out a, show, a shout out to a person that we lost a few days ago, Cinnamon Brown. And um, I, I just want to give her some peace and um, you know, thank her for the, the work that she's done in the industry and things of that nature. And this has been another T Lo Beto production, and you guys stay tuned for another episode. It's not just mine, it's all her house. This is our house. We got some fun people in the house tonight.
Drop the beat on the dance floor. Give the people what they're waiting for. Drop the beat on the dance floor. Watch the bass line cause an uproar. Drop the beat on the dance floor. As the crowd shout for more. Drop the beat on the dance floor. And let's rock this party for sure. If you're a house head, God bless you. Watch this. Yeah, I'm a house head. I'm all about this music. Yeah, I'm a house head. I lose control of this music. Yeah, I'm a house head. I'm all about this music. Yeah, I'm a house head. I lose control of this music. Yeah, I'm a house head. I'm all about this music. Yeah, I'm a house head. I lose control of this music. Yeah, I'm a house head. I'm all about this music. Say, yeah, I'm a house head. I lose control of this music. Beats, vocals, feel, vibe. Beats, vocals, feel, vibe. Beats, vocals, feel, vibe. Beats, vocals, feel, vibe. Yo, DJ, come on, drop the beat on the dance floor, give the people what they're waiting for, drop the beat on the dance floor, watch the bass line causing a, drop the beat on the dance floor, give the people what they're waiting for, drop the beat on the dance floor, watch the bass line causing a, drop the beat on the dance floor, as the crowd shout for more, drop the beat on the dance floor, and let's rock this party for sure. Where my house heads at? Beats, vocals, feel, vibe. 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 It's not just mine, his or her house. This is our house.